Well, first of all, the, the reporting system for complications has not been what it should be. And just recently, within the last year or so, and there's new data that will come, it hasn't been reported yet, uh, that will provide us a little bit more accurate uh, assessment of what the complication rates are. We have studies in other countries and other states where it's a lot higher. Uh, there's anecdotal stories. And again, I get back to the fact that a lot of women do not wish to have any attention drawn to themselves, and that's very, very understandable. And so we're not really, really sure. There was a study out of Sweden and, and a journal that I read before on the floor where uh, the complication rate for medical abortions is over 20 percent, and the complication for surgical abortion is 5.6. I think that it's an over five. I don't remember. I think that was the exact, the exact number. But we have, through Commissioner Janik now, we're getting better data. But Senator West, I mean, I can, uh, you, you look down at Florida, and I realize this is Texas, but a, a clinic that where their health department inspected an abortion clinic and they found boxes of aborted babies with flies running around them. And, and we found that in Texas? And everything. We have, uh, we have a clinic in Houston that has significant problems, and you hear stories from, from patients. And uh, it's been pointed out that an ambulatory surgical clinic is only looked at it, uh, every few years, and now under current laws it's a year, but it didn't mention the other entities that will also be looking at these clinics so that we can avoid something that happened in Philadelphia and Florida and now perhaps Houston. Perhaps Houston, but here's the deal. The, the reality is, is that the State Health Department, and we give them a budget, do we not? We, we provide them employees. We task them with responsibilities of health and safety of Texans. And if they are reporting that there haven't been any complications, should we take what they say or or should we depend upon what's happening in Sweden, or happening in Florida, or happening in Pennsylvania? Not until we get better data. And I think if I remember, and Senator Nelson was there at the committee meeting, and you were there, I believe, too, sir, uh, and that there's a new system being, that's being implemented that's going to give us better data. But under the current data? Under current, the current data is incomplete. Based on whose assessment, yours or theirs? Mine and theirs. Well, you know, that's not what they said to me. They basically said that as it relates to complications, and I agree with you, as of I think the first of the year, we have a new system that's uh, asking for different types of complications that we have put yes. in place at the health department. But prior to that, I was told the following, that there haven't been any, any reports of deaths. As far as I know, it, it, there hasn't been any major complications as it relates to these licensed abortions facilities. Yeah. That's what I was told. Yeah. Of course, that's self-reporting, Senator. Um, you know, you're asking the chicken or the fox to watch the hen house uh, because the, well, all, of these, I, that, all these complications are self-reported by the industry. Well, I mean, it's my understanding, and, I, and again, I can't sit up and say that I've been on one of these surveys, Dr. Duell, but it's my understanding that every year there is an inspector or whatever the correct terminology for the person goes out that goes out and inspect these facilities and make certain that the regulatory issues that they have to report on one being complications is in fact done correctly that's and here too before prior to this debate i don't know if anyone has actually complained maybe prior to this this is the second session during this legislative year no one's ever complained about the record keeping of these facilities as far as I know. And when you talk about Houston, there's an allegation down there and it's being investigated. And you would agree with me there has not been a determination yet, would you not? No, but I got a whole packet full of stories from down there if you'd like me to read them. Well, you know, I can understand and appreciate that. I think they should be turned over to the proper authority. Do you think the proper authority is the health department? Well, some of the stuff I've read, I think the district attorney might want to look at it, Senator. Well, well and, and the health department? Well, you want me to read some of it, too? No, I'm just I'm saying, do you think it should be turned over to the health department? Because we're talking about privileges now. We're talking about privileges and having, for the first time in history of the state of Texas, a requirement, a, sta a statute that require individuals that perform these types of procedures to have privileges in a hospital. And we, we have singled this particular procedure out. No other procedure but this procedure. 
So and that if, speaks, if it's in the vein, then that, that, that's the vein I was asking. Well, I, I don't know of any other group of surgeons that do other procedures that don't follow the standard of care of taking care of their patients. So you're saying that uh, physicians that perform these procedures do not follow the standard of care? Is that what, is that what you're saying, Dr. Dill? Exactly. So all of the physicians that perform these procedures don't follow, follow the I standard of care? I didn't say all, but there's a lot of them, because I've taken care of patients that have had complications, and they tell me, they call, and they can't get anybody. Okay. All right. And they, have, they go to the emergency department. Donna Campbell can tell you, Senator Campbell can tell you that. I've taken care of them. You ask any emergency room physician, and you ask them if they tried to call the clinic where they had the abortion, and they don't always get and that, well, and I don't know whether I should have that debate with you or have it, the debate with Senator Hager, but I'm, I'm more than happy to have that debate with you. Help me with this. And again, I'm not a physician, okay? I'm a lawyer, all right? And here's the situation. It is my understanding that licensed abortion facilities must have protocol in place to deal with emergencies, instances that you're talking about. They must either have a uh, privilege privileges in hospitals right now have, have an agreement with a physician in the community to take those, to take those issues, have uh, the ability to get patients into emergency rooms if there is a complication. Is, am I right about that or am I wrong? I don't know exactly. I don't remember all the rules, but they don't do that. No, well, okay. As, I mean, and you, you say, but I'm, I, what I'm asking is, is that the proper protocol? Whether they do it or not, it's not the question I ask. The is proper, that the proper protocol? The standard of care is that if you're taking care of a patient, that you are responsible for their follow-up care, the care of their complications, and make sure that whatever the procedure was, whatever the medical condition was that you treated, that that comes to an end uh, and that the patient is safe. Okay, and in terms of discharging, your responsibility pursuant to the standard of care. Would you agree with me that the health department has required the licensed abortion facilities have protocols in place that will satisfy that standard of care that you just articulated and that that protocol is the following. Number one, have privileges at a hospital. Number two, have a relationship with some physician in the community that has a privilege at the hospital. Number three, make certain that you have an, an association or make sure you get a patient to an emergency room. Would you agree that those are the things that the Department of Health requires? Well, if you tell me that is, I don't know, remember the regulations off the top of my head. Would, would that be reasonable, a reasonable approach to discharge the standard of care that you've articulated that's required by physicians that are licensed by the medical, Texas Medical Practice Act? That would be reasonable if they did it. I'm saying you're saying it would be reasonable or not reasonable? Uh -huh. It's but, reasonable if they, right. if they followed that, but they don't. So you're saying all of them don't follow that, Dr. Duell? You're I, not saying that all doctors in the state of Texas that perform abortions at uh, licensed abortion facilities don't follow that standard of care. You're not saying that, are you? It, well, if it's just one, Senator, and it's one woman who... No, 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 that, that wasn't a question I asked. You're not saying all physicians in the state of Texas don't follow that standard of care. You're not saying that, are you? No. Physicians that perform abortions. I don't know. Okay. Now, let me go to, we're talking about privileges now. Well, All right. we're, yes, do you, do you believe that there's equal protection issue here? When you single out one group of individuals and put a burden on them that others similarly situated, that is those that are licensed by the Medical Practice Act, you put a burden on them that you don't put on the others. You think it's an equal protection issue? I think it's a safety issue. I think we all the time, we as a legislature make decisions on uh, different circumstances uh, to fit the situation. And, and, and the safety issue needs to be, you need to have specific evidence that there is a safety issue before you go about passing a law that burdens one particular group and not the other group similarly situated, right? Well, I don't think it's a burden for a physician to have hospital privileges, Senator. Well, okay, well, I, I, what, you missed my point on that. Maybe I wasn't clear on it. You've got to have specific evidence, though, that we can put in a record here in the state of Texas, not in Sweden, not in Florida, 
not in Pennsylvania, but in Texas, that there's an issue? No. Do we have any specific evidence in the state of Texas that there's a problem? And if it is, if we do have it, what is it other than the Constitution? We have lots of emergency medicine physicians, a lot of family physicians like me, a lot of obstetricians, gynecologists, some who testified that when they have a patient having complications who's had an abortion, they cannot get the doctor who performed the abortion to take care of the patient. Okay, let me ask this. And you, That's you, testimony. I'm sorry. That was testimony we had. That was the testimony we had. Okay, and so based on that testimony, and you would agree that we had other testimony that was the, the complete opposite of that. We had right. testimony from people that thought that it wasn't necessary. The fact of the matter is we had more testimony from people that said that, this is, that they don't support this law than they had people that said they supported it. Well, I think actually, we had about 3,800. We had about 3,800 people testifying. I believe that's what Chairman Nelson said. Well, let's over break it down to the physicians who And over 2,000 of them said that this wasn't necessary. Well, let's, but a lot of those people are not physicians, and we had a lot of physicians testify. In fact, I think we had more physicians testify for this bill than against this bill, and it was brought up about some of these medical groups, such as ACOG and, and others uh, that were opposing this bill, but many, many times, those organizations do not represent the majority of the rank and file. Uh, okay. you, for know exactly, example, you know exactly where I was going. Yep. You know exactly where I was going. Well, I'm just, let's talk about the let's talk about the physicians. I mean, that test. I'm sorry. Yeah, well, the, the, there were physicians who who pr are practicing OBGYNs who were members of ACOG who took the opposite position that they took. And I would remind you that ACOG opposed the Affordable Care Act. So. From your point of view, that would take away their credibility right then and there. Uh, well, I'm not going to go down that rabbit trail. Let me, let's, stay on this, let's stay on this one right here. Yeah, I didn't think oh, you'd well, want to go down there. <laughs> we'll talk about that some other time, okay? But let's talk about this one right here. You said that, you're, that the evidence is based on the physicians. Let's talk about that. How many physicians groups that you know of, know of are against this bill that testified before us? Well, only one group uh, testified, and I believe that was ACOG. For, for purposes of the members that are not on Health and Human Services, what is ACOG? It's the American Congress of Obstetrics and Gynecology. What do they do? I mean, what's, I mean all right, obstetrics and gynecology. I, I'm not going to go there. But the, the reality is they were against this bill, right? The, the organization. That's right, the organization. All right, let's talk about the organization. How many physicians does that organization represent? I don't know. More than one? Yes, sir. More than 1,000? I don't know. I'm, I don't know how many uh, OBGYNs there are in this country or you the would state. Ag you would agree with me, though, it's a reputable organization? Yes. They're you would not agree always with right, me. but they're reputable. I'm sorry, say again? They're not always right, but they're reputable. Okay. And so this reputable organization came down and said that they are against this particular bill. And I think they even talked about this privilege issue. Do you recall that? I believe so. But I had remember OBGYNs who are a member of ACOG testifying uh, on the privilege bill that they think they ought to have privilege. Give, give, me, give me an example of at least one. Well, I don't remember anybody's name, but, I, but there were OBGYNs testifying uh, for the bill in its entirety. In its entirety, okay. All right. And uh, uh, probably, uh, thank you for more than adequately assisted me with making my case that this bill is not necessary. Thank you very much. I need to talk, I need to yield, would you yield? Well, I wish, wish we had a jury, Senator West. You're, you're a very we do good- We have a jury, look around. You're a very good lawyer. But <laughs> Thank you. Thanks, all right. Mr. President, I'm very happy to yield the floor back to Senator Hager. How gracious. <laughs> Senator Hager. Yes, sir. Let's talk a little bit more. What is the difference between licensed abortion facilities and these ambulatory surgical centers? If you, if you recall, we all got a packet during the committee hearing, pretty thick set of rules and regulations that we could go through each and every line item. But the short of it is ambulatory surgical centers have a higher standard for if there is severe complications. Okay, and, and, and thank you. And I'm not going to go into the detail. Yes, we did. So. In terms of compliance, this law would go into, when the governor signs it, and he will sign it, when will this law go into effect? As far as the ASC standard will be September 1 of next year, 2014. 
and that standard is the ability to convert to to, to, to for abortion clinics to come up to the ambulatory surgical center standard that portion of the bill is September 1 of 2014 okay let me ask this if there's a lawsuit filed which there will be does that and, uh, and let me back up there's a rulemaking process that will have to take place isn't the, the, the bill also at the very end one of the last sections gives obviously the Commissioner of Health and Human Services the ability for rulemaking authority on implementation of that portion of the bill if, if there deems necessary to be any. Do, do you know whether or not if a lawsuit is filed and a preliminary injunction is granted whether that would um, stop the uh, commissioner from beginning uh, begin the process? I, I, I would hope that a lawsuit is not filed. Well it, there will be. Okay. Okay I promise you. Promise. Now if a licensed abortions facility, let's assume worst case scenario, the law is upheld by the Supreme Court of the United States of America. If the law is upheld and licensed abortions facilities have to comply with the surgical center requirements, do those licensed abortion facilities then become ambulatory surgical centers? If they come up to those ASC standards, okay, so or they can continue, I would assume, if it's up to them whether they want to continue to operate as a center for any and all other services but ab abortion procedures. Okay. Thank you, Senator. I know that there's others that probably have questions, but I appreciate your response. Okay. Thank you, Senator West.